everybody, it's Rosie here for Astrophysiography. Today is a Tuesday night. Outside is typical England, cloudy, chance of rain, miserable. As much as I want to start doing equipment reviews, the post person's been today and they've left me a little something. They left me a little box. And continue what you click this up this video and you've read the title you already know what this is about this box has something in it for that mount which is off camera so without further ado let's bring the camera in we're in engineering anybody with a skywatcher hq5 hq6 the orion equivalents probably have heard of what's in this box. <laughs> For this mount, there is a belt mod available where you replace the spur gears for timing belts. Why would you do that? Gears inherently have a thing called backlash. That's where, if these are the gear teeth, where they mesh together, there's a bit of slop in them like that. That's backlash. Bit of gap in between them. The gap here, this tiny little gap in between the teeth. You might be able to see if I rock that right there, that movement there. That's backlash. The play in between individual gear teeth. This is my RA axis. It almost looks like the teeth are already worn. Look at that. That. I mean, I don't know the technical specs of this gearing system but yeah that seems a bit excessive that is what this mod is meant to assist with where that gap is can cause issues in timing and tracking connecting with a belt removes that backlash row and astronomy have done this in such a way as also to keep all the timings the same all the gear ratio the same Let's get inside the box. It seems incredibly well packaged, covered in packaging tape. Ha. Right, so what do we have in the box? We have some instructions. We'll put the instructions up there. So this is a spacer that goes there. Tiny pinion puller because there are two very small pinions that I need to take off during this removal. And I can tell you <laughs> from my time as being a mechanic, they don't like coming off. So I bought the pinion extractor. Allen keys and the new bolts to hold the cover in. Gears and the idlers. The declination axis drive gear. So we've got the new new gears, pinion and idler, and the belt. So logically speaking, this is gonna be the right ascension, right ascension belt kit. I was tempted to buy a spare belt just because, but you know, I read their recommendation and they said they really don't go wrong. So this is our kit. And this modification in England will set you back for a HEQ5 Pro with only one belt and the extractor tool i believe this set me back 110 pounds uh, i ordered it sunday night and it's tuesday now so it did get here very quickly <laughs> so let's bring the patient over and let's get modern so here we are now i've had a quick look at the instructions previously already but the first thing we need to do is take that side panel off and this front panel six bolts for this side panel one two three four five six i'm calling them bolts they are actually more, they are screws. I've already took a few of these bolts out, screws out, but I've got a couple left. This is the side of a HEQ5 Pro. This is your declination axis up here, and the right ascension axis is down here. And this is the one that normally, I keep thinking has a lot of grease. Uh, grease, grief. Especially if you, if you just look at the difference in backlash and play. 
they are a bit greasy they've still got a tiny bit of grease on them so that's the side cover to take the front cover off you've got one two screws three four five screws so let's get these off now as well front cover put that safe so in here is the actual circuitry and the control board and this is the declination axis that you have to move one eight, uh, 90 degrees to get the polar scope. So the first job we need to do, it seems like the instructions want us to start with declination. So it's telling us to identify the declination connector, which is this one. Let's have a look what this kind of plug is. Might be able to just push this one out. Yeah, you could use a flat blade screwdriver for this as well, just gently, gently. In fact, I might just do that. Up it is. And make a note where it goes and how it twists around these wires. Twists with this main plug. I may actually have to remove some more plugs. Oh boy, that's really coiled up. Right in there. It's completely coiled up. Also, unfortunately, at the minute where the camera is, it's completely in the way of where I need to be. I'm actually very tempted to actually unplug this one as well, which I don't actually know what this one, this plug does. But that coils around there, that coils around there. All right. So that's that plug undone. We need to remove three screws. And so we're going to need our Allen keys. What size Allen key are we going to need? Not those either, apparently. Just chuck them on the floor. It's the third biggest. And we need to undo this one, this one, and this one. They hold the motor in place. Oh yeah, really be careful with this. I've just noticed. There are, in fact, some washers on it. So put these into a safe place. Uh, you just saw a little bit of movement there. So we are on the right track. I am not complete. I am not bothered at all about any of these gears moving. I actually have marks on my mount where my home position is. Carefully remove this, feeding the wire. Ta da! Declination motor is on the bench or on the table on this, in this case. Here and here are two grub screws. There you go, right in there. Two grub screws. And they need loosening. Now it's time to remove this. Note the position of the motor wires relative to the motor plate for later reassembly. So we need to make sure that whatever way this goes, like this, goes back together this way. Luckily there is a picture of it in the instructions as well. But we'd do well to remember ourselves. So that's all three removed. You may notice the angle is going to be a bit skew if, but I've actually placed the screws in a slight triangle formation because that's the order that they, that's where they came off. Just like that. So now we need our pinion extractor tool. And I need the biggest Allen key, not on the floor, but in my hand. So with these, you just roll that all the way back. It literally just slips on top of the pinion. You're gonna wanna at least make sure it's centralized, though the tool should be measured. There's a choice of a three or four mil. I bought the four mil. Okay, even though I've got a bit of this grease on my hands, so it's a bit slippery. You just locate this, put the bolt over the middle of the pinion. And then you just tighten this up. Slowly but surely. Try not to lose the Allen key. And boom. And that is why you buy these tools. They are pinions and these kind of interference fit gears. They can be notoriously painful to get off. So here we have the actual belt, the new pinion, a Delrin idle little rod, and the new driven gear. So we need our 
new pulley, which has a very tiny grub screw in it. I'm not even gonna try to get that on camera. There are two, two grub screws. And allegedly there's going to be a 5.5 millimeter gap. That looks a bit more than 5.5 millimeter gap. Let's slacken off these grub screws just in case. There we go. That's more like it. Important distinction here, tightening versus nipping. The instructions explicitly say nip. To nip is you tighten them up until you get contact. So now that the grub screws are touching the, the shaft, and then you just get your Allen key and just tweak it ever so slightly, tiny bit of resistance, and they're nipped up. If you over tighten this, uh, you could pull the threads out because this looks like soft aluminium and you could, well, you will damage it. So for this bit, it says on the instructions that we're now refitting this plate. So we're just going to clean that up for the newbie. It says it should fit in smoothly, which it's not fitting in smoothly. In all honesty, though, as long as you find the right flat end, just like the just like the one we took out, this one has a flat on it. And as long as that flat matches up to the grub screws, we're in business. That's the Delrin idler rod in place. And now we need to put this back on. I've not secured the idler in place yet because I'm going to need to centralize it. So I'm only nipping these at the minute. So then I can make sure that it's centralized. And now I'm happy with that positioning. Don't over tighten it still. The next step is to cut those level. A bit like that. Might still need tweaking a bit. And now we've got that back in place. So this is one declination motor modified. So we're now back at the motor mount, should I say. The next step is to take this gear off. Just like the other ones, they've got some grub screws in it. One and two grub screws. This one, there should be more than enough. So it does say that this might have to be gently levered off. I'm going to gently lever it off. That's really on there. My word, I've just lost a grub screw. There it goes, I found it. There we go. Yeah, when in doubt, screwdriver is always your best friend. Work the gear around when you're levering like this. Because that way you begin to lift on all edges and off it comes. So just like before, there's a lot of grease left over. We don't need grease with belts. Grease with grease with belts. It's not a happy day. Such a lovely bit of machinery. Look at that. How wonderful. So this this kit is actually a massive treat to work with. Right, it says on the instructions here there should be a gap of about one or two mil behind here. I'm going to gauge that this Allen key is about two mil thick. We've got grub screws. And we need to slacken these grub screws off a bit more. I know this should slide on. There we go. So I'm actually going to use this as a feeler gauge. Get the Allen key in there. Just nip it up. There's that word again, nip. I should call this video nip. Now, unless you really want to go back round and 
reset your home positions, I would I would recommend marking your mount up. So the gear did slide in slightly while I was nipping it up. So my two mil quote feeler gauge doesn't fit anymore. However, it says a gap of one two two. So about 1.8 or whatever that gap is now should suffice. And now, as you may gather, it's time to put the motor in. So we need to make sure that the wire is fed through correctly. And us drop the motor in, like so. I'm not going to address the wire just yet, because I need to tension the belt but before I even go around tensioning the belt I need to put the screws back in so that's them started now we want to nip these up again because we need to tension the belt but it's going to be difficult to tension the belt with the motor plate and subsequently the motor flopping about every which way. So I'm going to tension this up slightly just to hold it in place. Just enough so I can get some movement on this. I'm going to check the alignment of everything. It looks like Looks like my worm motor is a bit low, but we'll confirm that. So we slip the belt on. Just checking the alignment again. I definitely think I want to bring that pinion motor up a bit. So I'm actually going to just slacken this off right now. There we go. So nip. And nip. Now we need some tension. So we pull this back. There goes my Allen key. So we need this belt to deflect two millimeters. So we pull back on this. We gently pull it up with the finger. So push up here, lock these back down so don't have to worry about that shifting. Yeah. I'm going to give it one more nip up. And that is the declination shaft. Just want to spin it a few times, make sure this belt isn't going to slip off. And now for the fun part, the wiring. So we want to make sure it's not touching that declination shaft. So we're going to coil that back on itself. This is the plug from up here. The entirety of the declination shaft is actually making this quite fiddly. Okay, is that back in? And click. So that's back in. There we go. That's plugged in. That's plugged in. Quick check. Is it touching the declination shaft? Because that's going to chafe it in no time. Yeah, we're fine. Onto right ascension. It's much of the same thing. In fact, it's all going to be identical barring one part, which is this plug here. That's for the right ascension motor. So, same like on the declination. Just going to pull this off gently, gently, really gently, because there's a capacitor right there. Do not want to take that capacitor off. There you go. If you break any of these capacitors, 
either you've got to get this motherboard replaced or repaired, or it's good night, Mr. Mount. Or Mrs. Mount, depending on. I'm not going to walk and talk through this one because my camera battery is also running out. So I'm going to get this one done as fast as possible. And I'll show you the end results. Before modification test, this is the RA, the right extension axis. And you can hear and, hear and see the noise it makes. I've got to be careful because I've just decided I've not used the extension, so. Declination axis. Listen to that. So that's the kind of noise this mod is meant to assist with at least. Maybe not eliminate completely, but at least assist. It's both belts done. More plugged in. Let's see how it goes. I'm quite nervous actually. Ooh. How's that belt looking on there? Yeah, doesn't look like it's going to fall off. Now for the originally the noisy one. Oh. Practically silent. That's practically a successful modification. Of course, we're not quite done yet. Now that we've finished with the Testing of the motors, making sure everything slews nicely. Belts aren't falling off, nice and tight. Not too tight. You might notice that this idler gear here is a lot bigger than the declination idler gear. And that did catch me off originally when I was first putting it all back on because I was measuring the gap here against that one. But then I realized that that was a lot bigger. Okay, three things left to put on. The first of which is the declination front cover. Put this cover back on because this side panel actually covers the access to these two bolts, these two screws. So we need to put this one on back on first. See if I can get this far without losing a, a screw yet. So what do you think? Do you think you're gonna do a belt mod at some point? Did you mount Crun with the belt already or are you planning on belt modding your HEQ5? I'm guessing you are if you've found this video. I hope this video has also shown that it's not all that difficult. You just need a couple of screwdrivers and that pinion gear tool. So that's the side panel, that's the front declination panel on. All that's left now is this side cover. So this goes like that. The observant amongst you might realize that that's not gonna hold in place. Now it will. So we need this, we need this. And there was another bag of bolts. I've just totally put the camera in my way. So I'm just gonna let hang that on it. I'm just gonna punch that through. That's one started. What size does this need? That Allen key there. So you might notice I'm just starting these. I'm not doing them up all the way. So once you've got them all started, that's when you can drive them home. So I'm just gonna tighten these up. All right, now they're all done up, I'm just gonna nip them. Yep, nothing needs to be too tight here. And the last one, all I gotta do is put it back in the home position. But we are otherwise done. So you can see the spacer bar is a bit of a different color, but you know, I'm actually all right with that. My intention is to spray paint some of this mount anyway, so I might end up just spraying this. But yeah, that's the belt modification done. I just need to put the telescope home. So, to wrap up, the belt mod is done and it was really rather straightforward to do. 
Uh, the instructions are clear and, con uh, clear and precise, concise. Nearly everything came in the kit. The only tools that I had to buy that didn't come, well, the only tools that didn't come in the kit was the uh, screwdriver, the Phillips screwdriver that I needed to get the casings off. Other than that, oh, and I used a flat blade screwdriver as a, as a lever. Other than that, everything was there. There's four different Allen keys. I heavily recommend you buy the pinion extractor because that just made life so much easier. I, I, I could have been there for ages faffing about with those pinions, but yeah, just with the with the built extractor for it, it was just tighten the tighten the nut up, tighten the bolt up, and off it came off. No problem. It sounds a lot better. So it's a lot more quiet, as as you might have heard. There's no more coffee grinder noise, as they put it. I can't give a complete verdict yet until a clear night. Hopefully, I'll have a clear night over the weekend. Friday and Saturday night, I'll be all right to go out with my telescope. That said, it's probably not going to be clear. Reasons why I bought the belt drive kit. First of all, it's just the noise of it. The fact that I had a load of backlash in that system. Secondly, I have abysmal PhD guiding. But I know there's a lot of backlash in that system. And there's one time I did have the guiding working somewhat all right, but it was still erratic. And I think I, I'm pretty sure it might have been that backlash. Is it worth the cost? £109, I believe I paid for it, including including the pinion extraction tool. It seems a bit steep at first, the price, but when, the way I've, I see it, and I mean, I bought this mount secondhand, but when, the way I see it, you pay this much for the mount, you're probably not gonna change mount for many years. I personally had that mount already for three years. So over the lifetime of me having that mount, because I don't see myself selling it anytime soon, <laughs> three, maybe for another five years, perhaps. We'll see what happens, we'll see where it goes. For the amount of time I plan of having this mount, the price I paid for this kit and the potential improvements it'll make. Yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing in astrophotography and astronomy hobby is cheap. So I actually think for bespoke made, for small independent engineering company selling a very niche product for a very specific problem. And it's actually really high quality, so nice finish. Yeah, I can justify that price tag. I don't regret paying for it. I don't think I got ripped off. I don't think I paid too much for it. Um, I'll probably end up releasing this video first and then have the follow up about whether or not I think the belt mod has changed anything, but we'll see. But the initial thoughts are positive. How was it to fit? Easy. The most difficult part was actually untangling those declination plugs. I'm not even joking. That was the most difficult part, was untangling those declination plug plugs. Everything else was really easy. It probably took me less than 10 minutes to do the right ascension mod and back into the telescope, back into the mount. If you go slow with it and be careful with any capacitors you come across, just go slow with it, take your time. It's really easy. Get yourself a small, like dual screwdriver set they're about 10 pounds and you'll always find use for these i think i've took about two hours doing this but i did go slow and i was fa i was faffing around with cameras and trying to get audio software working to get the audio stuff doing it's now half past 11 i've got work in the morning i've not been sleeping well these past few nights so i'm gonna call it there i hope if you decide to do this mod yourself You've got, you've got the kit and you've got yourself a HEQ5 Pro. I hope you find, if you watch this video as a, can I do it? I hope you found this video easy to follow, informative. Give me any feedback about it. I'm, I'm new to doing videos. I like making videos, but I'm new to doing it. So you, this obviously shows that I'm a novice. I'm not even worried about that. But if you found this video useful and now you feel competent and confident in tackling this modification for your own mount, that's great. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know. All that left now is to say thanks for watching. I hope you have clear skies, not like in Britain at the minute where it's cloudy as hell. Clear skies and all the good fortunes to you. See you later.